Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we five true ghost stories part 1. So let's dive in. Number 1. My unexciting yet scary experience. I promise that this is 100% real and I wish this was just for jokes, but when I was 12, I was living in an apartment with my mom and I had a few friends that I would always play with. One day I remember it was in the middle of fall and we were bored and wanted to do something and of course we had a board that was like a Ouija board but it had a star in the middle. We decided to play that game and we waited till dark and got candles and asked dumb questions not taking it seriously acting like it was moving on its own when it wasn't. My friend at the time, her name was Alex, asked a question saying is there a ghost attached to this apartment if so. Prove it nothing happened at the moment obviously and we continued with our charades and called it a night. After I went to my house ate dinner and went to bed. Around 2 to 3 am I don't remember I woke up to tug on my leg and at the time I was scared shitless and was paranoid for the rest of the night not able to fall asleep for the next hour. I eventually fall back asleep and the next morning my ankle was red and swollen in a kind of mark of a hand. I never had another encounter like this, but I think it had to do with that question she asks I don't know, but that was a pretty boring encounter I had. Number 2. Scary encounter turned my skeptic mother into a believer. Before any of this happened, my mom never believed in ghosts. Not so much that people stopped existing after death, as she still believes in heaven, but she didn't think the souls would stick around or get stuck with us. I believed and still do believe in ghosts, which she thought was weird until about a year ago. I had moved back in with my mom after college while waiting to get an apartment of my own. Her house, which she bought the year before, isn't that old, late 2000s or early 2010s. It's small and serves as a nice place to live after she retired. As far as we knew, the previous resident had died while in a nursing home, not on the property, though there might have been a previous resident, the first after the house was built. Since we occasionally got mail for the same guy, let's call him D. We'll come back to him later. So, here's what happened. It's late at night, and I'm getting ready for bed. Hair and rollers, clay mask on, putting body moisturizer on my arms while listening to my music on speaker. Mom's already in bed, and her bedroom is on the other side of the house. Just as I'm halfway through my routine, I hear her yell my name. And it wasn't in the way that parents yell when you're in trouble or need you to put away the groceries. It sounded like something big happened. I think it's her old dog using the bedroom as a bathroom again, so I head over. When I walk in, my mom's white as a sheet, looking around like she's looking for something. I ask her what's up, and she is freaked out, saying that a man was in her room. I'm weirded out, since no one could get into her room, window too tiny for a person to climb through when I had just checked the front and back door's locks before I went to the bathroom. She goes on to say that she was lying in bed, waiting to fall asleep, when she looked over and saw a man coming towards her from her bathroom, hands stretched out to her. Described it like the drawing of the evil uncle from Twitches. She bolted up out of fear or to scream for help because he looked so real, only for him to just not be there when she moved. I joked that she had a ghost in her room, and she told me not to say that because she was thinking the same thing but didn't want it to be true. My mom got up and was pacing around in the room for a bit and tried to go back to sleep with light on, but ended up sleeping on her recliner that night. She did go back to sleeping in her room after that night, but only for a couple nights before she had a flight across the country to visit my siblings. I agreed to sleep in her room since that's where her pet's kennels are, and joked that I would tell her if I ran into the ghost. Kind of mean on my part, since the experience really shook my mom, but it felt kind of funny how serious she got and insisted it was a ghost after not believing in them before. However, my first night, something just felt wrong when I turned off the lights and settled into the bed. 
I felt a sense of impeding dread while lying there, and something told me not to fall asleep. It was so creepy, and despite no logical reason to be, I was scared to go to sleep in my mom's room. Like something was waiting for me the second I lost consciousness, and I was the stupid character who was walking around the haunted house while the ghost got closer. Too spooked to go to sleep, I turned on the light and grabbed some sage and moon-charged crystals I have in my room, putting slash burning them around the bedroom and her bathroom doorways. Then I texted my mom and told her yep, her room is haunted and that something was scaring me from going to sleep. She was not happy to hear that I got spooked as well and needed crystals, sage, and the lights on to sleep. So right before she came home, my mom did a lot of research and got crystals and a cross that were supposed to help filter out strong negative energy. She brought it home, replaced my protection stuff with hers, and even made a proclamation her first night back in her room that this was her home. And if the spirit was going to scare or hurt her again, he was not welcomed and had to leave. Thankfully, it seemed that all have worked, as she hasn't had an experience like that again. So, who was this spirit? We honestly don't know. I suspect it was D, since he was the first resident and might have come back if he died. But, but we don't know if he is actually dead, so it may not be him. Another explanation is that the spirit was invited in a few weeks prior, when my mom was super sick. It wasn't COVID or something that needed the hospital, but she couldn't leave her room for over a week and only got better after about 10 days. We read that sometimes being super sick can attract negative spiritual attention, and since she was stuck in her room for the time, it, it might have settled there instead of another part of or the whole house. But since then, my mom still affirms that something tried to grab her that night and hasn't moved her protection since. Number 3. Why I don't mess with Ouija boards. Seems like a lot of people have scary experiences with Ouija boards, here is mine. Back on Halloween night 2019 I was at a party with my friend Alex and couple of his friends we were all having a good time jamming out to spooky Halloween music. We had all been partying pretty good and some of us were getting tired but we wanted to play a board or card game or something to end the night with. One of Alex's friends who will have her name changed to Lexi for privacy suggested we do a Ouija board like in the movies she said. Now I grew up in a pretty standard Christian home and was always warned around Halloween time every year stay away from Ouija boards blah 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 they are evil blah blah blah. But didn't really buy into it very much. Well, none of us actually had a Ouija board or knew where to find one. So Lexi suggested we just make our own so of course being dumb teenagers we just looked up a design and took a sharpie and drew one up. Using an old guitar pick as a pointer we sat down and started asking it questions. At first the questions were stupid like which one of us is the dumbest, which one of us will make the most money after high school. Just dumb questions we would get just a bunch of NOs like the board was annoyed or something. Well after a while of asking dumb questions Lexi thought it would be a good idea to kick it up a notch. Lexi asked the board if there was anyone who would like to talk to us then the whole mood in the room changed it felt colder and everyone for some reason felt uneasy. The pointer slowly moved over to yes. Almost everyone felt super uncomfortable, but one of our friends who I'll call Mike wasn't conviction he was convinced someone was just moving to pointer to scare everyone. Mike decided to conduct a little test and asked the board to name a dead relative that no one in the room knew about and right then and there the board spelled out Eleanor. Everyone started freaking out because we all knew Mike's grandmother and her name was Irene. Apparently, Eleanor was his great-great-aunt who had passed on before his mom had died at that point. We all were scared shitless and asked what the board wanted. The board started spelled out extremely vulgar obscenities and weird words no one knew we quickly said goodbye and ended the session. We turned on the lights and everyone was so freaked out. We threw out the board. None of us have touched a board since then.
Number 4. First Time Experience So, to start, I am a firm skeptic to the paranormal and I didn't have an experience until last year. I am 25 years old and I had to move into my grandma's old abandoned house because of personal reasons I don't want to get into. To give you an image of the house, it is a standard two-story house with an attic full of spiders and a basement with a door that doesn't lock to the outside deck. The house has old blue peeling paint due to neglect. Old small square windows, one in each bedroom. I slept in the bedroom that my sister used to sleep in because my grandfather died years ago in his room of congestive heart failure and it just gave me the creep sleeping in a room someone died in. Well one night I'm lying in bed, when I clearly hear what sounds like a grown man of reasonable size walking up the noisy wooden steps that lead into the living room. I assume someone broke in, because as I said before the basement door doesn't lock and anyone could break in. I start to sweat and adrenaline kicks in as I grab my grandfather's old hunting knife. As soon as it sounded like the man hit the top step, I kicked open the door, ready to kill whoever is on the other side of the door. Nobody was there. I couldn't believe what I just experienced. No, that is impossible. I felt relieved because it wasn't a person but so lost as to how that was possible. My mother claims it to be my grandfather. I have heard the steps again. But spiritual incense and a prayer was done at the house and I never heard the heavy footsteps again. What do you think? Number 5. Poltergeist? My first experience with the paranormal was actually a string of experiences. I was 16, and my family had just moved into a new home. I loved the house. I had my own room that I picked myself and I didn't feel any kind of hesitance while unpacking and decorating to make myself feel more at home. Everything was great. At least, for the first week. After school, I would get home with my little brother about an hour before my mom. One day, I was the first one into the home. I threw my bag on the kitchen table and found my cat stood frozen, staring at a door in the kitchen that led to our garage. I spoke to my cat. What are you doing? I walked towards him, but before I could touch him, a woman's scream came from the garage and my cat sprinted from the room, and I followed. Taking my little brother with me outside and calling my mom. My brother insisted he didn't hear anything and my mom suggested that I must have imagined it, but I knew it was real. Once my mom got home, we checked the house to find nothing. She suggested that I was stressed and watching too many scary movies. I didn't bother to argue any further, I could tell that I wasn't going to be believed, so I grabbed my bag and walked to my bedroom at the end of the hall. I stood in the doorway, freezing in my tracks. My closet door was slid open and hanging from its track, as if someone had tried to pull it off and my pillow was standing in the middle of the room. A flat flimsy pillow that I couldn't get to stand if I wanted it to. I yelled for my mom. Someone's been in my room. I accused. She came back, my little brother trailing behind her. I pointed in the room, only to find the pillow now lying flat, as it should have been the whole time. You must have knocked it off the bed when you woke up this morning. She brushed it off, but I knew I hadn't, and even if I had, how was it standing like that? I played with the pillow for several minutes, trying to mimic the position it had been in, but I couldn't. It wasn't possible. I went to bed that night without a problem. While I did think what had happened earlier that day was strange, I didn't lose sleep over it, but I was prone to waking throughout the night, so like clockwork. I woke around 3 in the morning and got up to go to the bathroom. When I returned the doorway to my bedroom, I froze. I could see a figure, sitting on the edge of my bed. 
It had no features, just the shadow of a large man. I leaned forward, squinting my eyes, trying to adjust my vision to the darkness of my room, but before I could move any further, the figure stood and charged at me. I've never screamed so loud. My feet came out from under me and I hit the floor, my hand flipping on the light before I had lost my balance. Nothing was there. My mom and brother were there in an instant, wondering why I was screaming and now crying on the floor. I tried to explain. You were dreaming. My mom told me. I was awake. I was up. I tried to argue, but she shook her head. You must have been dreaming. She insisted. Go back to bed. I didn't sleep well that night. The next day went fine. That is, until I was back home from school. The house suddenly didn't feel like home to me and my room did not feel like mine. I felt like I was invading someone else's space and I was apologetic. I attempted to make an Ouija board out of cardboard and a clear bottle cap, I was desperate to confirm my own experiences. Hello? I said quietly, waiting for a response. Nothing. I'm sorry if we moved into your home. I'll be a good roommate. I'm very clean. I began to ramble, but the bottle cap never moved. I started to feel silly, looking down at the makeshift board, so I pushed it away and climbed into bed. That night, I heard something rattling around. I initially thought it was a large house moth, knocking itself into something. I flipped on my bedside lamp and noticed the board on the floor, only the bottle cap was standing on its side, spinning like a quarter in circles. I let out a breath of air in disbelief and the cap dropped, once again motionless. I jumped out of bed and grabbed the board, tearing it in half and shoving it in the trash. I kept my lamp on for about an hour before I started to feel tired again. Reluctantly, I flipped the lamp back off and drifted to sleep. I slept with a blindfold on, irritated by the smallest bit of light, so when I awoke again, feeling the cold air of my fan, I assume I had kicked my blanket off in my sleep. I felt around the bed, trying to find it to cover myself again, but no luck, so I lifted my blindfold and was horrified to see my blanket, standing tall above me. I moved quickly, attempting to throw my feet to the side and run to the door, but the blanket fell and I was forced back to my mattress, a weight suffocating me. As if someone had just laid on top of me. I gasped for breath, trying to scream, but not a sound would escape my throat. I remember my eyelids fluttering as I lost consciousness from the lack of air. That morning, I awoke with my blindfold lifted, my blanket tossed to the side of the bed, and pain taking over my body. I knew I hadn't imagined it. I came out of my room and couldn't stop myself from crying when I found my mom getting ready for work in the bathroom. I tried to explain, but she didn't believe me. She never believed me. You were dreaming. She said to me. You can stay home from school today. Try and get some rest. I reluctantly nodded and went back to bed, still scared to really go back to sleep. I laid stiff and waited for the sound of my mom and brother leaving for the day. I heard the keys jingle and the door close. I was alone in the home. I rolled onto my stomach and cried into my pillow. I'm sorry about your mom. A voice said, clearly beside me. I gasped and sat up straight. No one. I couldn't handle being alone there. I got out of bed and walked myself to school. We moved out of the home shortly after due to my mom getting married, and all activity stopped, much to my relief. I would like to th thank everyone for watching the video, and to wish you all a wonderful day. 
Also, if you have a ghost story that you would like to share, please post it in the comments down below.